I am just leaving my hostel right behind me here, the Central House in Porto. Fantastic hostel, one of the best I've stayed in. And Camille actually starts right here. I'm just going to head down to the waterfront. And today I'm going to do a bit of a different route than the normal one. First stretch is supposed to be very industrial and very ugly. I am going to go down the coast for the day to Villa do Conde, and then I'm going to join the Central from there. Behind me is the Matasinos, Matasino, Montasinos Castle, and just behind me here is Matasinos itself. One of the first places you can stop on this Camino Portugues de la Costa. As you can see, the weather isn't all that great. Behind me, it's still sunny, but up ahead, it looks a bit overcast. Hopefully, it won't rain too much because I don't have my poncho and I don't have much of rain gear with me. As you can see, it just started to drizzle a bit, but it's not all too bad. It's a very light drizzle. See that here? Surf is in the water, they're all over the place. And all I have is a jacket and shorts. I also have my umbrella, but I don't think it's raining enough. I'm gonna take a little break and there's no reason to get wet, 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 wet. So I went in, got myself a coffee and a pastel de nata. And now I am heading to the little tourist information center, which is right across the way there. there. And I'm going to get myself a map and a stamp. My first official stamp, other than the one from the albergue where we're staying. And now I'm just following the little arrow. Beautiful alberga here in Villa do Conde, here. Another lounge here. And then, that's where they have the breakfast in the morning. And then they have a nice kitchen here where people are cooking. I just checked in again, had a shower, and got all cleaned up, and now I am sitting down by the beach here. You can see it's an unbelievably beautiful beach. The walk today was longer than expected. My watch said 40 something kilometers in total, and it always is a bit more than you expect, but it felt longer. Tomorrow I am heading over to the Camino Central, so I'm not sure how many kilometers I'm going to do tomorrow, but hopefully not as many as I did today. 
I have a very decent breakfast at the South Vertigo. And the one thing I've noticed about walking in Portugal, it's very difficult to find a decent coffee in the morning. So that's why staying at that albergue and getting coffee is worthwhile. It's a beautiful day today. And it should be good weather all the way today, hopefully. But people are waking up. There's a good little cafe down there, actually, I forgot all about. And I'm heading down towards the river and then the Camino Central Junction. It should be an easy walk today and I'm not 100% sure how far I'm going to go. It's probably going to be like 10, 12 kilometers to the junction, and then I'll probably do another 20 kilometers or so. But as you can see, Vila do Conde is a beautiful little town. Okay, so I'm having my second coffee. <laughs> still not quite awake, you see my eyes are still half shut. The junction is right ahead and then hopefully we'll be off the main road. Finally made it to the junction of the Camino Central and all the signs and then here in Portugal you always have the sign to Fatima, which is another pilgrimage site. Just walking through Gratis. Beautiful old town. And if I find the albergue and it looks good, I might stay here, make it a really short day. This will be nice and rested. But so far it looks very, very pretty. Been a very easy walk today. Even though it wasn't the official, official way, it is still good. And now I am on the Camino uh, Central. But I just need to look where the albergue is, and then I'll figure out if I'm going to stay or not. I just arrived in the albergue. I got the corner bed here, away from the front door and next to the window. So it's going to be really nice. It's 10 people, 8, 9 people in this room, so we'll see how many of them snore, but it was a very easy day. This is the rest of the albergue here. Really nice place. I am just leaving Gratis, the, and down there is the cafe. I just had a good coffee, and today I'm going through Barcelos and then probably another five or six kilometers after it, so it's like 22, 23 kilometers. Should be a good walk today. It's a beautiful morning here. The fields are covered in fog and the sun is just rising. Last night the albergo was really nice. There were around 60 pilgrims, I would say. And they had a fun party, a harvest party. So the whole village came and shucked corn and then had a barbecue with some amazing food. Today I'm going to try to make it just past Barcelos. It's been mostly on dirt paths, some of them a bit muddy but it's been really, really pretty. It's been a bit up and downhill today, but nothing serious. And I think it's another 10 kilometers to Barcelos, which is supposed to be a really, really beautiful town. And that is where the typical poster originated. Very, very little town, but I think I'm gonna carry on because it's only 12 o'clock and Tomorrow would be 30 kilometers otherwise. So I'm just gonna give it a quick walk through. Stop for incredible lunch just at the corner here, right outside of Barcelos, 
for nine euros. I got a huge, huge plate of pork, french fries, salad, and another whole bowl of rice. It was really, really, really good. And now, I think it's about another eight kilometers to go. It got really hot after the lunch. It's about 30 degrees Celsius, I think, which would be probably around 90 Fahrenheit. And I'm walking on the side of the road here. And I rigged up my umbrella, so I don't need to be holding it. It's giving me a bit of shade, so it's protecting me and I can take off my hat, which is getting rather hot too. Bad. It's only about another six kilometers left till the elevator game. And this is my room. The sun is not quite out yet. A lot of people ignoring it. A lot got up super early at Delberg. Maybe they wanted to get Ponte Lima super early. We are finally on a nice little dirt path. First section was on the road, a bit dangerous road actually. Now we've got some nice little fields to our sides. Today I am making it to Ponte de Lima. And after Ponte de Lima, I think it's one more stop and then we'll be in Tui on the border with Spain. So I should be there by Wednesday. So I don't want to get there on the weekend because Spaniards love doing the last hundred kilometers. So it gets pretty busy, but I've checked hotels so far and it doesn't look very busy. Stay. It's called Quinta de Portela. And seeing it's so beautiful, I decided to stay. I'll show you some of it. down the valley. Up, oh, there's some sheep running. I don't know if you can see them. <laughs> there were 12 pilgrims in total staying here, and none of them had planned on staying here. It was just such a beautiful place. Everybody just got pulled in. It's about nine kilometers to Ponte de Lima. And then I'm not sure how far I'm gonna go the actual stage after Ponte de Lima and Tui. There's a halfway point where you can stop at like 18 kilometers. Cool fountain down there, with some fresh water. I just filled up my water bottle with that. <laughs> that one I could just pour out the water, but never pour out the water. You know that the fountain is actually working. Because the ones where it's a tap, I've done it a few times where I've poured out my water, 
And then there was no water in the fountain itself. But that one had running water so I could pour it straight out. Some channel of shrine. Beautiful old house here. And as you can see, the sun is out and the weather is almost perfect. Just stopped for breakfast at a little bakery about four kilometers from the alberga where you stayed. Had a really nice breakfast. A lot of the pilgrims showed up. And I was walking on this little path. Pilgrims behind me. And it's about another five kilometers or four to Ponte de Lima. And then we'll see where we head after that. But it's been really, really pretty. And it was a lot of fun having breakfast. Fantastic breakfast. And one thing I found here in Portugal the bakeries are the best place to have breakfast because they have very good bread and this one had a very good coffee. crossing the bridge here in Ponte de Lima. It's 18 kilometers to Rubiales. We are probably, I'm gonna to try to go to, because it's 11.30, so I should have enough time. But Ponte de Lima is very nice. Bit touristy, but not all too bad. It definitely is very, very official. Enjoy the way, huh? Eh? Thank you. Thank you. Had a very fun experience with a guy giving me his stamp. Very charming guy. And now I'm carrying on hopefully another 18 kilometers. The last stretch is supposed to be a bit uphill, so we'll see if I make it. But if not, there's some albergues right before the climb so we'll see if that is any good but so far it's just before 12 o'clock so four or five hours more funny pilgrim monument Forest here, about two kilometers from La Bruja. It's a nice swimming spot, a lot of people were swimming there, but I'm carrying on. Go up and up and up and up and up. Finally feels like a real Camino. It's quite steep, I must say, but feels great finally to be off the asphalt and to finally feel like you're really on the Camino. Just walking into Rubiais, down there in the valley. Just in front of the Alberta Gimpli, there's some space available. And got one of the last bottom bunks, which is very lucky. And it's only eight euros, but it's quite full. 
There's a nice bar restaurant here next door. And I have it back to eat. I'm just leaving the alberg as you can see I'm still very sleepy because I had a not so good night of sleep but there's a very cool wall behind me uh, today I'm walking to Tui or Valenza and I think I'm going to stay in Valenza because it seems like it's a better deal and uh, it's only like 19 kilometers so it should be easy I think my ears are sticking out under these it's funny how there we go now I don't have point of ears but it's like 20 kilometers today and it's not supposed to be as steep as it was yesterday. We have the albergue here. There's another albergue here. This one has um, better bunk beds. And then a bit tiny bit further down there's another albergue. And carrying on this street all the way down is a restaurant that had pretty decent food for very cheap. Last night the albergue was full but most all of the beds were just uh, the bottom beds, not the top beds, which is always nice. We had a very nice, easy walk this morning. A few little uphills and downhills. We have an audio behind us, which I never saw on the coastal Camino, but there have been about eight or nine pilgrims out. I think we're around, what is it, 14 kilometers from Valencia or Tui. And it's been really, really pleasant. Some beautiful waterfalls along the way. Some very pretty little houses here behind me. Modern house next to me. And here we have Shrine. And you'll find these all over the place, actually. They're pretty cool. You should be a candle burning somewhere. Oh no, it's been a very pretty Camino. Very easy to find your way on this Camino. Here we have the arrow. There are some clouds in the sky, so the weather might be changing. It's only 135 to go. And this is a really nice little alberg over here. It's 12.30, so it was a quick walk into Valencia. We're going to head over to Tui and then walk a bit, probably another 5 to 10 kilometers. I'm not making it a super long day, but not making it a short day. And then hopefully this way I will be ahead of the pack of whoever starts in Tui. A beautiful fort, beautiful little town, but lots of tourists. It seems very touristy, so that's why I decided not to stay here. Initially I was going to stay here, but it looks a bit too touristy and it's way too early. And I also want to not get into the rush of people running to the albergues. So hopefully I'll be able to avoid that by walking a bit longer today. We just crossed the river Mignol and the bridge there, and now we are in Spain. And things do look a bit different here again. Glad to be back into Spain. I'm gonna grab a bite to eat here, and then I'm gonna decide if I'm gonna stay here in Tui or carry on for a bit. But I had a really, really good lunch. There is a Parador, and they're usually my favorite places to stay, but it didn't quite feel right. It was a bit pricier than normal to stay here tonight, even though they do have a special pilgrim rate that was still 130 euros. Catch, 150 bucks. But I found a really nice looking albergue, and I'm heading there right now. 
beautiful brand new place. It's like two months old. Big window and very nice bunks. You got some lockers to lock away your backpack. And the difference between Alberga Municipal and one of these is, first of all, you got much nicer mattresses. You get real sheets. You get a towel, you get a nice blanket, and you get very comfortable pillows. And if it's a really nice alberga, you get a plug next to your bed and a little light so you can read at night. We have a coffee mat. Let's see if it works. Put in my coin. Don't get much for one euro. But yeah, hey, at least it's a coffee. Yeah, it's not bad at all. But this place is really, really nice, as you can see. A nice little sitting area. Even the toaster. It is a bit outside of town, but like it's a 10 minute walk to the plaza. A really nice hostel. And I had a really good night's sleep because I was sleeping all by myself. The sun isn't out yet, but that's not a problem because I'm going to go get myself a coffee first. Very beautiful walk out of town, I must say. It is 117 kilometers, I think it is left from Tui to Santiago and for now it looks like it's going to be very flat. Good day. There are some clouds in the sky and towards the mountains it looks like there could be some rain coming but hopefully that's not the case. And absolutely stunning little forests and stuff going out of town. Lots of pilgrims started in Tui. Okay. These Roman bridges really are quite something when you look at the way they being built. You can see sort of see the ruts and the carriages and the people walking over it over the years. But the Camino is very well marked as usual. There's another arrow up front there. I had a coffee stop about eight kilometers out of Tui, was the first place it was actually a real place to have something to eat or grab a coffee. But it's been pretty and so far 80% on trails. It still isn't light. I'm not quite used to this time change between Portugal and Spain yet. So I'm way, way, way too early. But it's a good thing. <laughs> this way I get a bit more time in. And then we have some pilgrims marching along slowly but surely. And I'm off to find my coffee. It should be like three kilometers or something like that.
just I'm just walking out of the moss. We had my coffee and breakfast, actually exceptional coffee. And all the pilgrims that I've met so far sort of bunched up there. So it was a fun time. I'd spend about an hour having breakfast, but it's still very foggy. And I really do, for some strange reason, love fog in the morning. The fog is slowly, slowly dissipating at the first blue skies of the day. Just arrived in Brondera. Looks very, very pretty actually. of these places that offer free stamps. One there with just a few kilometers outside of Redondera. And I'm gonna start to look for a place to rest today. Lots of cars racing by. I just made it into an albergue and <laughs> I am totally sweated to the death but this is the albergue, very nice place. It was a really really nice walk today. It was rather hot towards the end after the lunch. I had a big big giant lunch and then after that it was uphill and really really hot but this is a beautiful little location we're at and the albergue is very very pretty. I got the last bottom bunk and it's extra wide bed, so I'm very happy. The usual, got my little lamp, got an outlet to charge, got a little table, and my locker box. It is 7.30 a.m. Leaving a bit early because I want to see if I can make it to Caldas del Rey or a bit beyond. Normally you'd go to Pontevedra, uh, but the thing I've been to Pontevedra a few times before, I'm just going to keep on going. Uh, the Cadena has two or three very nice little albergues. The one I stayed at was called Afilla do Mar. I only discovered once I'd booked that that albergue here on the corner, which is just off the main street, was cheaper. It was only 20 euro and it has curtains on their beds. That really doesn't matter. So we're off to Pontevedra and then hopefully Caldasari. Sun is finally out. Uh, it's looking really beautiful here in this forest.
some pretty cool graffiti. I am just walking through Pontevedra, and the back of me is the cathedral I just visited. I just had a quick coffee with some friends, and now I'm heading on to Caldas del Rey. I probably won't make it all the way up to Caldas del Rey, but I'll make it halfway there at least. But Pontevedra is a beautiful old town. It's about another 18 kilometers to Caldas del Rey. But it's a beautiful, beautiful day. There's a heat wave for the last two, three days. It's supposed to last another day or two. I'm underneath my umbrella because it is crazy hot today. Umbrella helps a bit, not much. And up front here, we've got a Millenaria, one of the mile markers that we found on the Roman roads from Sevilla up on the Via de la Plata. This is a spot where you can choose spiritual or the regular. The temperature in the forest is way, way, way better. So it's out there and open, it feels like it's 40 degrees. And here, it feels very nice. So. Just made it into Caldas de Rey. Behind me is the church. And it is still hot as can be. It was a long, long, long walk. Way longer than expected. Behind me there is a church. And just down there is a really nice hotel with hot springs. But I have a nice albergue this time. I've stayed there before. A really, really nice old style hotel. And I'm just looking for my albergue, which I'm not 100% sure where it is. I'm going to have to pull up the map now. Inside, getting ready for the morning and outside it's still very very dark I'm walking out of Caldas de Rey beautiful rural town actually today I am walking to Padron which isn't too far away I just had a coffee and um, I should have had a coffee here because it's better, a hundred times better than where I went it's about 8 a.m. And it's already around 17 degrees centigrade, which is just under 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Yesterday I ended up walking 37 kilometers, which is way longer than expected, but it was way hotter than expected. It's about 19 kilometers, I think it is today, so it's not all too far. Some cyclists. About lots and lots of pilgrims today. It's the most pilgrims I've ever seen. Have the morning pack about 20 pilgrims and if one looks closely one notices that none of them are carrying backpack backpacks Somebody left a fancy shoe, and it's 27 kilometers to go to Santiago. It's about another kilometer to the center, but it's been a pretty easy walk so far. But, um, Palermo is a beautiful little town, and hopefully, 
I'll find a place to stay here because I don't want to walk in the heat like I did yesterday. It is 7 a.m. I am leaving Padron and today it's 25 kilometers to Santiago. The reason I'm leaving so early is because the last few days it's been so killer hot in the afternoon after one o'clock that I want to get to Santiago before one. And seeing it's only 25 kilometers, it should be a pretty easy walk. I've done those walk before. It's not the most interesting, so it should be quick, pretty, pretty fast. It's a bit of a foggy day, but so far it hasn't rained and I don't think it calls for rain, so we should be good. There are a bunch of pilgrims on the road this morning. Everybody's anxious to get to Santiago. We're about five kilometers out of Padre. We're back in the fields. It's been zigzagging in and out try and see how many kilometers that's 20 kilometers to go <laughs> there's a marker but it's so dark that i couldn't see exactly how many kilometers it was there are lots and lots and lots of pilgrims on this last stage because both the caminos come together in little nila but you really noticed it yesterday morning and today that both caminos came together the costa the Central and I'd say there are a few hundred pilgrims at all times but it wasn't a problem to find a place in Padrón yesterday there's my alarm clock to remind me something but as you can see we're walking on a little road here there's no traffic which is nice because all the traffic is up the main road Just had my second coffee of the day behind me there. Very good coffee, by the way, but very, very busy. Walking next to the street a bit, and then we're going in and out of the forest. Not the nice spot, but it's also not all too bad. We're on the final stretches here. Just walking through Miladoilo, which is a little town or bedroom community right before Santiago. It's about eight kilometers to go. And I just stopped for uh, apple juice and a little snack. And now it's sort of downhill and then we're in Santiago. I'm just looking at the pharmacy there. It's a beautiful 21 degrees centigrade, so 60 something degrees Fahrenheit today. So it's very pleasant, very easy walking weather. It's all downhill this way. Finally, there's some sun. Uh, maybe it does open up today. At least it didn't rain. And up front there on the horizon, that is Santiago. Definitely isn't the nicest approach into Santiago. Actually, the one on the Frances is probably much prettier than this one. All in all, this Camino Portugues Central has been good. I wouldn't say it's my favorite Camino, though. Well, that is still definitely the Via de la Plata from Sevilla up. But it is a nice Camino. I did do a bit of the coastal route at the first day out of Porto. And I knew that that coastal route was very, very pretty. There were a lot of pilgrims on that route. Once you got on the central, there were way less pilgrims, strange enough. I thought there would be way more pilgrims on the central and the coastal because that's normally the case and if i'd have to do it again i would probably just start the central camino in uh, ponte lima 
because that's a really beautiful little town and the Camino got really pretty starting there. Also Tui was very, very beautiful. But all in all, it is a pretty Camino. If it's your first Camino, it's a pretty easy one. Even though the coastal route is much easier. There are far less hills and there's a lot of boardwalk and flat walking. This Camino Central has a few stretches that are quite steep, but nothing bone breaking. You can take the bend off to a monastery right here. Bunch of very confused pilgrims, because I don't know which way to go.